Hi, today I'll be showing you how to pre-stretch strings manually and how to adjust your technique when pre-stretching at different percentages. All right, let's go outside. All right, so before I get into the technique I'll be showing you today, I did want to talk about three reasons why you would pre-stretch strings manually. Uh, one, to uh, reduce or re relax the strings by pulling it, um, you'll uh, take out the coil memory of the strings especially for natural gut. You could use it for multi-filaments also, and it makes it easier to handle and uh, less chances of kinking during the stringing process. Uh, the second reason would be to reduce the initial tension loss within the first 24 hours. Uh, it will result though in a tighter or a stiffer string bed. And then the third reason is if you have a manual machine and you don't have a uh, setting to pre-stretch strings on your machine. This technique I'll be sharing with you is with uh, just me, myself, and um, there are other techniques that requires two people. I never really liked it, uh, my preference, but uh, you got two people, one person holding each end of the string. Now you got 40 feet of string, so you know that requires uh, that amount of space, but you know you got two people pulling and if one guy slips, and I've seen this happen before, one guy slips and well you know what's gonna happen with the other guy. So. Um, you know, doing it by yourself, if you slip, then it's all on you. So, um, anyway, I'm gonna wrap the string around a pole. So, I located a nice round pole here, and uh, preferably something round. You don't want something with uh, corners on it. And then on top of that, I wrapped a rag around it to protect it even more. So, I'm gonna wrap the string around the, the pole and show you uh, as I walk back to start pulling. All right, at this point, I have the string wrapped around the pole. And uh, before I start walking back, uh, I do want to make sure that I have a starting clamp in each of my pockets. So I have one in my left and one in my right. So you'll notice as I pull it back, I'm holding the uh, end here on one, one hand and the other hand has the coil of string. So what I'm going to do is I walk back, I'm going to let the string kind of naturally uncoil itself. So then that way the string never touches the ground. And um, you know, you're not going to get any kind of kinking before you actually stretch the string so you're just gonna keep it walking you can let it kind of come out of your hand um, one loop at a time if it's not gonna uncoil itself naturally um, so I'm gonna keep walking back till I reach the end all right so I reached the end of the string now what's good about this technique where you wrap it around a pole is you only need 20 feet of space so I'm gonna go ahead and bring uh, the string clamps out of my pocket I have about an inch uh, sticking out of the string clamp on the other end and uh, before I start pulling it, I did want to show you something up close, um, a better way to pull it back. So in the past, what I did, I, was, I would just pull it with the handles in my hand and pull it back. But there have been a couple of times that as I pulled it back, I was actually squeezing it and then the handles uh, released the string. So that wasn't a good thing. So uh, if you turn the clamp upside down and pull it this way, uh, there's less chances of you actually squeezing the handles because your your hand is not even on the handle So what I'm gonna do is go back to my position there and then I'll go ahead and I'm gonna put my full body weight on this and stretch it for 10 seconds And then what I did too is as I was pre-stretching it, I was always making sure my back leg was there to brace me. I, again, just in case something um, uh, weird happened, you know, slippage or breakage. So uh, you always want to protect for that just in case. But um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and um, share with you some of the techniques I use to uh, pre-stretch at different percentages. With today's professional electronic machines, most of them have a built-in pre-stretch uh, feature. So. Um, but before then, uh, most machines, lockout or drop weight, even some electronic machines didn't have that. So you would manually have to go out and pre-stretch the string and then install them. But as pre-stretching became more and more popular, especially among the touring players, uh, actually I had a tournament six years ago that uh, players were asking for the five, 10, 15%. So uh, what I did with my uh, pre-stretching technique to accommodate that, is whenever they asked for 5%, I held it for 10 seconds like I did just a little while ago. 
Uh, if they asked for 10% pre-stretch, then I held it for 20 seconds. And then if they asked for 15, which happened uh, once, I held it for 30 seconds. So uh, in my mind, that, that was the best I could do uh, with the machine that I had. Um, I didn't get any complaints, so I guess that was good. Um, but um, yeah, with my machine today, I have a Prince P7000 uh, with a built-in pre-stretch. So, you know, that's not an issue anymore. So, uh, but if you guys have any techniques in pre-stretching strings according to a percentage, yeah, let me know. Comment below because uh, I like to hear it. Um, not that I have to use it anymore, but it might be useful for other people. If you're interested in becoming a certified stringer or master racket technician, the USRSA has a certification test and in that test, uh, it does talk about pre-stretching. So you might want to study up on that. Also, if you want to learn another way to pre-stretch string using the full length of string, Mark Campanelli has an interesting way to do it on the uh, IART website. So I'll include the link below. And as a premium member, you'll be able to check that out. Thanks for watching, happy stringing, and let your strings play.